Okay. Peace. Infinite Waters diving deep once again. We have a very special guest. I call her the Oracle. <laughs> Sonia <laughs> Barrett. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much. For anyone that doesn't know, she is the author of the holographic canvas, the fusing of mind and matter. Her insights are cutting edge. Much of it supported by quantum physics. Sonia's work bridges the gap between science and spirituality. And she has just produced her first documentary titled The Business of Disease. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, here we are. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. It's always fun chatting with you because we're going down the same interesting uh, path. <laughs> Well, so, yes, we go back and I always love how you dive into hidden areas, which so many of us take for granted. I love your whole theme of the cosmic game. That's really what helped me to awaken back in 2009. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, you've just sort of like just taken off just wings and just flying and uh and i love watching you do that but yeah the game aspect it did the same thing for me when i realized one day wait a second it's just like one giant game you know a game and a game and a game you know, do you remember that what is that called you know where you 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 take it apart and there's a you know figure inside a figure inside a figure i forgot there's a name for it but right. um but yeah it's a game and a game and a game and a game you know and uh and i think the more we realize that i for me anyway it started to simplify things i you don't take it as seriously you know you do at times but your base reasoning and base awareness is that realization well before we talk about the documentary just simplify the holographic canvas because that is fascinating in itself that book is groundbreaking who simplify uh, talk about it um you know i wrote it a little while ago and it's interesting you know because you do things and then you you're all moved to this other stage of whatever the next thing is the, the book was definitely a launching pad and for not just for me but so many people um i think the book actually reflects a lot of what I was discovering and what I had discovered over uh, my 10, 10 years of trying to understand what life is and what it's all about. So I touched on, uh, of course, the holographic nature of reality, um, even concepts about time travel, you know, the fact that we are time traveling all the time. Um, and, um, you know, just sort of looked at areas that we typically don't examine, which of course is the game aspect of reality, the cosmic uh, cosmic game itself, um, and just exploring uh, the possibilities, letting people realize that there were endless possibilities and that there was really no final uh, point as we've sort of been programmed to believe, but it was just this open, uh, unending sea of potentials and possibilities and that it was all up to the individual to step outside the box and take the blinders off and just say, you know what, I'm, I'm ready to understand and to see more of who I am um, and, and, and all that I can continue to become or expand into. Well, so quantum physics too is, you know, there's, there's those elements, definitely a lot of quantum physics references, because I think that uh, physics definitely is a great um, platform um, for us to understand more about this. What I love about your work is that it's always coming from a place of empowerment, that you have the power to start cracking the codes, start seeing the glitch in, in the matrix and start realizing that no one's to blame <laughs> that's the big <laughs> yep that's the powerful part right there that to me is an extremely powerful piece but believe it or not you know for some people it's it's scary because it leaves you without someone to blame or um a crutch per se and i think people are so afraid of change because of the unknown 
that 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 kind of freaks you know some people out the fact that there's nobody to blame well then it all comes back to you and then there is no blame so so that's the other part people end up having to learn is even for yourself it's it's not a blame game it's a every situation every experience is an opportunity this is why we're here so so i say there is no good and bad experience it's just being able to recognize the gift in every single thing that you have experienced, regardless of how challenging um, it appeared to be. There is a reason why we encountered that experience or we made those choices. And I think when we understand that blame is not necessary, it's the, the whole concept is just part of the game, I think then we can be free to extract the gifts that we received from those things that we have experienced in our lives. And that was, that was certainly it for me. And, you know, you know, I, I had gone through some horrific, what would be considered horrific experiences, which brought me here. If I hadn't gone through those experiences and I'm not saying everybody has to go through those, but for me, it, I mean, it motivated me. It put fire under me. It made me question and be curious and just dive in and go, I, I need to know, why are we here? You know, what is this? And, uh, you know, here I am. You talk of how many of us, we may be living in a kind of virtual reality. And that's mm -hmm. what I've seen as well. And when we talk of what is real, and so many of us, we believe everything to be real until when you step back and start to see it in a different way, you find even more power. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and yeah, in, in the holographic canvas, that was definitely one of the things that I focused on is the idea of real. And I, and I said, you know, what is real? Define real. And I define it as realm of focus. Whatever we're focused on, that is what we would define as real for us at the moment. And, and I look at the words real, um, realm, and reality, they're all offshoots of each other. Real, realm, reality. They're the same words. So if it's realm of focus, it would simply mean that whatever that realm at this moment for us, this is real, we're having this conversation, this, this is a realm that we have established for ourselves to dialogue. This is very real for us. So just think of the things that you look at in your life that, and, and, and establish limitations for yourself and the world that you've created for yourself, that is real to you. You can make it unreal, but at that moment, you're saturated in it. You're, you become addicted to whatever reality um, you focus on and whatever we define as real at that moment becomes our habit and it becomes very challenging for people to step out of it regardless of the discomfort that they are experiencing. So real is realm of focus. That is a powerful thing. What am I focused on right now? What am I focused on? What am I making real for me right now? Yeah. I love your positive energy just naturally. And when we talk of your latest documentary, The Business of Disease, phenomenal work, what inspired you to set on this voyage? Um, well, you know, my, my, I thought at the time that it was simply, you know, just me being different, but um, I actually got a little tired of the marketing, of the cancer marketing, and it was mainly the breast cancer marketing, and I wondered what kind of impact that was having on, on our minds, and, and it's certainly not to trivialize people's experiences, but I, I started to question that. I think, I'm thinking, you know, this is really marketed. Just the same way I speak about the fact that reality is marketed to us. Reality is a marketed experience. Whatever reality, um, the con there's, there's certain constructs of reality that, that is definitely marketed to us, and we live that. And we don't realize that, and we make it a part of our, uh, our brain's uh, image or concept of what reality is. And so the, the, the marketing of breast cancer, um, I started looking at the the symbols, the pink ribbon um, symbols, because every time you see pink, like with anything else that's a symbol, you, you identify, you immediately, you see pink now. It doesn't matter even if it doesn't say breast cancer, the, the, the idea of pink is now, has now become that. 
So I started to wonder what, you know, what was that doing to our minds? How are we processing that? How are we taking that in? And that's how this came about. And I wanted to interview people who um, were not just going to give philosophical responses, but to give actual, maybe some scientific information on how, how we are designed, how we function in terms of marketing and so on. And I thought it was going to be a tiny film, um, like a YouTube film or something, and it, it just turned into this bigger thing that we have. Well, I, I loved it. watching it, and it's just amazing how so many of us, for instance, you have this ice bucket challenge that's oh. going on right now, and you see everyone doing it. Sometimes you say to yourself, I don't want to be left out. Let me throw some ice over me. It's so amazing how all of us fall for the okie doke in terms of medicine. When we have something wrong with us, we go to the doctor. Right. What do you feel can serve as a catalyst for us to start realizing there are alternatives? Because when I watched the documentary, it's amazing just to see how we are energy and a lot, right. of, a lot of the diseases, <laughs> we don't need pills. We can actually heal ourselves in a very natural, simple way. Right. And I think that that was something that I wanted to also be careful of because people can get, I think, turned off when they don't have um, that kind of understanding, say, okay, well, we can heal ourselves. Yes, we can heal ourselves this body is designed to do that we see that when we get a cut or a bruise or you know just simple just little things you know we heal from a cold we recover um so i think that, so there is a natural healing um ability there for this uh amazing vehicle this amazing design i think that i people be really need to really begin to take an honest look at themselves, meaning the, their lives. I think more than anything, we need to look at our emotional state. I think that's such a huge piece. We need to look at our belief systems. We need to look at um, how happy we are, I think, more than anything else. I think to look at how happy we are in our in our lives. We need to look at how authentic our lives are. Are our lives authentic? authentic. Am I just being another Borg mind again, as you mentioned, the ice bucket challenge, because to me, that's some sort of ritual. Like, anyway, that's a, that's a whole other <laughs> dialogue. <laughs> but, um, you know, so, so I think that we, when we begin to look at these things, w what we will find is we start finding who we are. And I think there's, I think authenticity curiosity, all of those things begin to grow our brain, begin to allow us to tap into um, more, um, even though the whole brain really is working. We, there is 100% operating, as they say. They say we use 10%, but um, I think the brain, again, allows us to see and experience reality according to um, the latitude of our perception, how much we can, you know, we, we can take in as a possibility. So with health, I think it, I really do believe that it begins there. How much of yourself do you give over to the external world in terms of a doctor? Um, how much do you invest in yourself? In taking care of yourself how lazy are you to go and do your own research and and be investigative as to what a symptom may be everything doesn't have to be identified with a name and I think we become so addicted to that that as soon as we find out the name of something then even if that's not what it is we begin to develop symptoms. You know how many times people have gone to the doctor, they have no symptoms, they feel great. And I've talked to people like that, they feel really good. And the doctor says, well, actually you have the big C or whatever. And suddenly all the, they start having all the symptoms, you know, everything starts happening to them. So I think that we really need to um, really re-examine how we're actually living our lives is it just is it just nine to five are you just doing your job and coming home and uh doing the usual is it stuck in a routine because the, the the brain it needs uh for you to to explore to show it something new 
to take all of that in. And somebody might say, well, you know, that's all well and good, but, you know, I've been sick for a while. Okay, well, then let's look at when did that start? When, when did you start feeling this way? What was going on in your life when this began? And I think people can trace it back, you know, they'll see, oh, that's right. When, I've, when it's first started, this is what I was going through. Um, how, you know, how do you eat? I say it's not all just about food. Obviously, eating the highest frequency foods, this is what, how I like to put it, um, is, is a way to go to help the body, to help to support the body as the body deals with us with all of our emotional ups and up and down. So when we look at it that way, it makes a huge difference. So it's not just I eat well because there are people that eat well and then they still get sick. So what else is going on with the consciousness? What what else is going on? Are we stuck in our religion? You know, I've been going to the same church for 30 <laughs> years. You know, what? Are, where, where is the growth in there? Growth is so essential. So it's, it's all of those components. That's so well put. I see that we love doing the same thing as everyone else is doing. We are... With the Borg mind, yeah. Right. It's the Borg mind and it's very hard to break out of. And I feel it's when... Comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And you see that with the ice bucket challenge and everything else, that it's addictive. We don't want to be left out. And what I, I love about the documentary is that you really offer so many alternatives, people who are already in the medical field. And right. I talked to Dr. Bruce Lipton couple of uh like a month ago and mm -hmm. he talks epigenetics um, right. a lot of people talking about neuroplasticity you're having mm -hmm. science has to <laughs> keep up right now because the new science right. the quantum science physics is showing us that we are amazing we can do so much oh yeah and mm -hmm. what i find is that Many times with the business of disease, do you feel that once we stop really blaming the, the industry and start mm -hmm. realizing we are the industry, our whole lifestyle? Right. If that would change things? Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, if the individual, and again, it's all of those components that I pieces that I put in place. Um, I think when one comes into that space, I think it allows you to really step back and realize and, and take the take responsibility for yourself, as opposed to depending on the system to fix you. Um, I think the system would have no choice but to change. But right now, the system is able to be what it is because of people's need for it to save them. People have, you know, it's a savior program that we have. We want something out there to always save us. We don't want to really do the work. We don't want to come in here. We want to rely on, we've got to, we've got to have health care, um, a health care plan. We've got to have health insurance. And I'm not telling anybody to not have health insurance. I'm just saying, examine what you're talking about here. Because I've seen people who are absolutely, you know, they didn't have anything wrong for, you know, however many years, and they're freaking out. What if something happens? So we live in that state of mind of, oh, my God, what if something happens? What if something happens? Then that's what insurance is. Insurance is about just in case something happens. Just in case something happens. And so we, we almost want something to happen so we, we can use it. And it sounds funny, but that's basically how we're thinking. Then, then you get to go, oh, thank God I had, you know, my insurance. So I think we start reassessing these things. Then it, the system, it, it doesn't, it won't really matter what the system uh, does and everybody is not going to you know go into that state of of understanding because everybody isn't here i don't believe in this timeline as we know it to be um to have that kind of evolution and it's okay everybody doesn't have to everybody's here on their own mission and those that understand this and those who are ready to make that leap wake up and take back responsibility for yourself. This is your vehicle. 
It's like, you know, you, we've leased it out. I like to say that we've rented it out to the system. Yeah. Um, and the system says, okay, well, um, this is what I'll do for you. You let us use your vehicle and your mind and we're going to compensate you with, you know, whatever it is the compensation is. We're going to make sure you have life insurance. You're going to have this. You're going to do, you know. So I think we have to look at that. This is my vehicle. This is how I see it. And I and I don't wish to lease it out. This is mine. I I occupy it. And I think we identify ourselves as the body. And I think we have to take it to another level where we recognize. Wait a second. I am this being that cannot be. Uh, limited or confined to my vehicle however this is the vehicle that i use that the expansive part of me uses to move around on in this reality to have this experience it's wired for it so it's it it depends you know we have to change our perception of right. this this vehicle and reality overall and i think when we understand the more we understand it the easier it is to shift away from these programmed concepts and you talk of architects of your own reality, and that's what I love. And when we talk of just marketing, I see that you always talk of levels of the game. And that's what I love about your work, because you're always diving, diving deep. And there's just so many <laughs> levels to this. I remember the conversation we had about a year ago, and you said something which triggered me to say that there's got to be people who are more advanced than us because where does that leave us? Okay. And then I right. say to myself, when you have uh, like with the business of disease and just marketing, I feel there are beings who are so advanced on a deeper mm -hmm. level, not just mm -hmm. uh, reading a book, but very advanced to know how oh, human yeah. beings operate. And absolutely. And sometimes when you empower yourself, you begin to learn certain secrets, but it's a choice if you want to empower people or whether you want to manipulate people. And Absolutely. how far do you feel it will go until people start to really begin to awaken? Because you talk of timelines and, and that's why do you feel that it just comes when sometimes it's too late when you have to go through a medical crisis or do you feel that um this can be changed by getting it in the schools getting this because when i watched your documentary i was saying this should be shown in every single school because it's yeah. just so empowering and if, if this kind of documentary which it will be um is shown all over imagine what would happen and then right. people will start I, becoming yeah. the architects yeah, I and and I think, you know, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but there's there's Dr. Rapai said one thing in the film um, that I really loved. And, and he picked up his cell phone and, and he says, you know, this is not the technology that I'm really interested in. What I'm interested in is the technology of the body, what we can do with this body. There's amazing things. And he's talking about, um, he's, he studied um, Zen and, and I guess hung out with some of the Zen masters and they're able to control their uh, body's temperature and, you know, do all kinds of things. To me, those are natural things. I think all of those things are natural abilities and it sounds like it's like, oh, superhuman, but it really isn't what we what we have is the programming we're programmed to understand and to see and believe that reality is the, the set way which is extremely limiting we've bought into it and it's been we hand it down from one generation to the next so that's really what we're dealing with and so the brain is wired for that the brain well, it will, you know, the, not just the brain, but we talk about the brain because it is the main operating system there in terms of dialoguing with the rest of the body. But when, when, as we begin to step into this realization, even just to understand what we're talking about, even just to, to process and accept that, you know what? Yeah, I get it. That's possible. That in itself begins to open the door in you. It begins to even open the door in you because now your brain goes, ah, so, okay, we have accepted that as a possibility. But if it's, you're completely like shut off, then you will continue to operate based on what I like to refer to as these default programs. You don't wake up 
there's a default program, a set of programs that just run, and that's what you end up uh, living by, by this. So people come here with their own, their own mission, their own agenda. Um, although it's a nice idea that everybody may someday all shift out of it, that might not necessarily be so. But I think people step up according to their journey and according to when they are ready. I don't necessarily think that it's because of like anything, you know, maybe that I say. I think that people who were somehow ready for maybe what I'm saying showed up. They, they, they're there, they happen to find me on YouTube or wherever, and, and, and they heard the thing for them that was like maybe one word and it was what they needed. Right. So that's what I see. And automatically we want everybody to feel what we feel. Right. But we have to right. realize that it's an amazing game and nobody is deficient. In all honesty, nobody's deficient because what? Energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but can be transformed from uh, one form on, into another. So since nobody dies and energy just is what it is forevermore, the individual will always have an opportunity to play the game differently. Not better, but just differently. We are choosing a more evolved level of the game right now. That That's what people like you and I are choosing. And to address this real quickly, yes, I've often said there are people who um, are way more advanced in the sense of just being incredibly aware. They came into their awareness of what is possible beyond the stage, the level one human experience. And, and so they are doing what they're doing. They're living maybe life differently. They may walk, walk among us, certainly. How many people do you walk around and they don't know <laughs> that you know what you know? You know, so we have to recognize that it's a giant playing field with many levels. Um, and it is our right to expand into being true masters to 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 right, recognize right. that. Yeah, what, what I love about the work is that you are. You're putting out content and, and I always talk of radical action, and I feel that's why the world is the way it is, because people who run the show that's all they do is radical action. They don't meditate, yeah. they just act. <laughs> they say, right, I'm right. gonna do this. I'm gonna produce a newspaper every single day. It may be garbage, but guess what? They have the consistency to produce content. Right. And, and that's why mm. they start shaping the reality of consensus. Because mm -hmm. somebody will buy it. Somebody someone, will read it. Yeah, But yeah. it shows you somebody... on a deeper level, there's always someone out there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's precisely my point that is precisely somebody needs that experience somebody came in to this reality and they say do not try to show me anything outside of the limitations this is what i'm here to do is to experience being totally limited or to be able to maybe to experience a middle ground of limitations but people come in and it doesn't matter what you or I say, it wouldn't change, wouldn't change anything for them because that's just their journey in that moment. And so the system uh, basically uh, supplies the tools needed to keep a certain the, the, uh, part of the game going, the, limitation, the limiting game going until you step out of it. We, we, need, we need that, um, what do you call it? Um, um, oh God, what's the word? Anyway, we, we do need some friction. We need something to push us. So if that system wasn't there doing what they're doing, as much as we want to think, oh yes, we'll just peace and love and kumbaya all day and no, but th there's nothing. W where would the motivation be? There would be nothing there to push you. It's a game and that's how games work. You have to, you dive in and then you figure out the game and then you go, ah, oh, and then you start making your way out of the game. Like Monopoly, you know, you're trying to pass, go get, collect your 200, you know, but, but you're constantly reaching into deeper levels until we start, we really expand out of this level of limitation. That's all it is. It's not the ultimate. It's not the ultimate in our evolution. It's simply 
being able to eventually evolve beyond this limiting concept of the game. Then we're into something more expansive where we own who we are. We can teleport. We can do all of these things. Why? Because we've transcended the programs that say you can't. We've transcended the programs about what the laws of physics are. Those are all programs. Right. I love that so much. And you were one of the catalysts in my journey just for remembering who I was and making this uh, the business of disease. What was your aha moment? Because when you're in the process, you may have had, aha, I get it now. What was your greatest finding that hit wow. you like a ton of bricks making this? Because you must have had to research so much and, and find so much hidden stuff you probably weren't aware of. You know, I think for me, more than anything else, it was talking to all these people. They were just amazing. The stuff, what I was learning, I think one, and this was from everybody, but I think one of the, the people that really it hit me at the time was Dr. Ernest Rossi. And I hope to, uh, my plan is to do a, a, a three part of actually of this film because I couldn't do this film in to the degree that it was, it would be way too heavy for some people. Because, yeah, I mean, we're talking some serious information. So, but Dr. Rossi, when he talks about the, you know, ultradian rhythm, um, you know, uh, taking a 20 minute, you know, break, why it was necessary, take a, a break every, um, what is it, 120 minutes or something like that. And what happens with the brain, um, it, it's brain growth and expansion in consciousness. And the information that he was, was sharing was allowing me to tie, the, tie it in, you know, connect the dots with some of the information that I had. So for me, that was one of the really groundbreaking things. And, and of course, he's a neuroscientist. So there was so much incredible information there. And um, even in talking to Stephen Halperin, um, who many, a lot of people know, I mean, he was amazing in terms of the, the kind of music that he put out in terms of uh, the brain. And there were some things that he had said didn't make it to the film, but um, a, a sound, there's a certain sound with, that I've had all, all my life. It's this little cricket sound that you hear. And he talked a little bit about that um, in terms of, I guess, meditation and uh, people who are in a certain space that they, this is a sound that they hear uh, and being able to actually meditate to that sound. Now, I thought everybody heard it for a long time. I thought everybody heard that particular sound. I didn't know that, that everybody didn't hear that sound. So I just never really talked about it because I didn't know how to describe it. <laughs> so, so, so the information that was shared there um, was incredible. And uh, I'm like, you know, and talking to Dr. Guazami, who I just love, um, and Bruce, yeah, there was a connect the dots with pretty much everybody that provided some information. It was, I, I was, that's what I was doing. I, I was just soaking it up. It's fascinated. And all these people were just really beautiful. And that's what I wanted. I wanted people who were uh, going to be authentic and genuine in, um, in being a, in it, a part of the film. I didn't want people who were ego driven or any of that. I just, I didn't want that. I wanted the film to be true to the core as to how I am. And so the film has to, to be that. These are real people. They really are genuine. Oh, yes, and, yes, um, yes. and Catherine Rossi, when she says, I wanna live in a world that's really, really big. I wanna live outside, you know, the box. I don't want box, uh, what does she say? I don't want boxes or, or borders or whatever. And she is also um, a neuroscientist, but just amazing things. So the title does kind of fool you, though. The title, because it says the business of disease, but it actually it's, talks about the business, but it takes you into this whole other level. Yeah. Well, it's phenomenal. And I know you love hiking and you have a great passion for it. And when we look at technology, 
because I remember talking in 2009, we were talking about how everyone is on their iPhone and now it really seems like <laughs> we are computers, <laughs> even myself, how much time mm -hmm. I'm spending on the computer and oh, yeah. how, how important do you feel it is to still realize the human being is the greatest form of technology? Oh, because oh, it seems that, like that's, in the next two years, yeah. we will be computers <laughs> with the right things. Well, going. that's it. Well, that's, that's just it though. And I think that's, you know, people's fear is in not understanding the design of the body and the whole, what we call a universe is that all the technology is really mimicking the original technology, which is the body which is what we look at as a universe. Everything is is um, is is mimicking a, a much grander technology, and this body is um, a, a divine piece of technology. It is the most amazing, magnificent piece of technology. Considering that it is a way for you, as this expansive being, to puppet, to move around, and I move my fingers and my hand. Well, what's moving all this? You know to move around, to feel, to have emotions based on how this body is designed and wired, electrochemical impulses. That's what allows us to have these feelings of you know, happiness or sadness or joy or, or whatever in this magnificent vehicle and all the, the chemicals that are um, released um, in, in the body, in the brain. So I think to begin to look at that, that you are in this magnificent technology to begin with, your body is that, um, and to not, not externalize so much, not, not reduce yourself and put technology, external technology in a place that's up here. Um, I think one of the things, and I love a lot of the technology, so let me say that, I do, but I know for first and foremost that there is no technology that will be designed that would be more expansive than than me than than what I am and who I am with same thing with you with everybody but they just have to know that these are t these are toys these are tools not only are they toys and tools but in in the, at the retreat I think it was at the retreat I also talked about the fact that what we can do though is to look at the ex expansion of technology that we're going through right now, that we're dealing with right now, and see that there is this incredible window of ex consciousness, expansion in consciousness for us to be designing in that manner. That should tell you that it is, a, we're living in a, in a time where human beings then can also evolve their technology. As that tech, there's, that's a parallel that's going on. You know, but we see everything is out there. No, it's an opportunity. If that, if we are expanding in technology in an external manner, then what about this technology? What about this technology? And in you such know, a quick time as well. In such a quick yeah. time. So sure. it's sci signs of the times, really. Absolutely. Signs of the times. Don't forget what your body is and ex take it further. And if you are on the phone, and, and I'm on the phone all the time too. I find, I mean, when I say I'm on the phone, if I'm out, I'm checking my emails and I'm on the computer more than I ever thought that I would ever be. But that's why I go out in nature so much, not just because of that, because I've been doing it way before computers really were around. But you go out there, I don't take your shoes off, rub it. If you had to go in your backyard, rub your feet on the grass, you have to, you have to balance yourself and you have to get rid of the static electricity that builds up in your body from all this uh, technology that we're sitting in and saturated with, even your, even your car, you know? So we're bombarded by all of it, you know, all the time. Don't look at it as a good or bad thing. What do I do to balance things out? That, that's how I see it. Uh, what do I do to balance things out and to continue to evolve myself? Not be afraid that the technology may evolve beyond me. That's not my fear. What do I now do to continue my evolution as I play with these toys, as I have this experience. You are one of the most uh, inspiring people I know and definitely keep doing what you're doing because I feel it's so needed right now on the planet. And where can people see the documentary? 
Well, um, the documentary is actually um, going to be, we're going to be doing screenings. If you go to tug to you gg.com you will see that it's up we the, the schedule has not been set yet i'm hoping in the next week that they'll start setting you know schedule for screening in theaters in different different places different areas um and then there will be a list i keep saying that uh but there's been so much that's had to happen that uh, you know it's it, that's just the way it is in doing a film the first time i've ever done it now i know uh, but it, we don't have it video on demand yet, but we will once we do the theater screenings, then it will be. So in another um, month, I'd say in another, no, I'm, I'd say in another six weeks because we have to give time for the marketing of it. But the schedule will be up in terms of where you can see it, but, but it'll probably take about six weeks to actually be able to see it in one of these uh, places. Some people have had an opportunity to screen it. There are people that... Um, I bought the DVD in advance and they were allowed to screen it on pri uh, Vimeo, private screening on Vimeo. Wonderful. So, and oh, and it's the businessofdisease.com. Sorry, the businessofdisease.com is the website for the film and my website um, is spiritinform.com. Wonderful website, great articles there. And once again, just thank you so much for taking time out thank of your busy you. schedule because thank you. everyone is busy here in this matrix. <laughs> you know, it keeps us on our toes. It keeps but us hopping, boy. <laughs> it keeps us hopping, you know. But what, what you're doing is, is really fantastic. And, and to see that you've been doing it and the passion is still there. I think that's the wonderful thing about this journey that the deeper you go, the deeper it gets, but the more fulfilling right. it gets. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you've just taken off, like I said. So um, just expressing your truth and, and really sharing and inspiring people. Uh, and to me, you know, I, I do it because it's, it's my journey. It's, it's me discovering um, more than anything else. That, that's really why I do it. And in the process, I share. I share where I'm at and what I now understand. Well, yeah. once again, thank you so much. And join us again dive deep and to everyone else out there stay inspired we are here infinite waters diving deep once again stay well stay healthy peace bye <laughs>